This is the fly I'll do here today. It's the cassard from Ray Bergman's book, Trout. It's a reasonably difficult fly to do, especially mounting the wing. This fly was the forerunner. Mary Orvis Marbury's favorite flies in their histories features the cassard. And it's a much easier fly to tie. I'll do that one in a separate video linked below. Okay, start the thread just a little bit behind the eye. Take it all the way back to the bend. I'm using Benecki white 12 watt thread here. Any light colored thread work. As long as it doesn't change the color of the floss later. Tie in some fine gold tinsel on the uh, far side of the hook. I'm using metal here. If you use mylar, put the gold side of the mylar towards the hook. I'm taking five wraps of tinsel back, and then I'll take five wraps of tinsel forward. It works best if you do this by feel. Slide off the wrap of tinsel that preceded the one you're doing now. Just wrap it on there and then slide it off and you'll, you'll feel a click. And uh, you'll get a nice edge to edge wrap that way. Try to bind down the tinsel underneath the hook. It's not absolutely critical that you do this. Just get it bound down. And take the thread all the way just to a place just short of where you started it in the first place. As, as we tie this fly, we're going to try to build a taper that's fat in the middle and narrow on the ends. And I've just flattened the thread by spinning the bobbin counterclockwise as if I'm unscrewing a light bulb. Try to do all the body building with flattened thread. It just makes the, uh, makes the floss go on better later. Okay, I've got a pair of married tails here. The, the near tails were married from goose secondaries and wood duck lefts, and the far was made from rights. There's about approximately three strands of each making up this married tail. And I'll put a link to my married wing tutorial down below if you haven't done any marrying. It's fairly, fairly easy. There are just a couple things you have to know. Trim off the butts at an angle. Again, constantly thinking about building a taper on this fly. Spinning the bobbin again here, and I'll speed up some of these sequences where I'm just wrapping thread to build a, a taper. The next thing we're going to tie in is our rib. Again, flat gold tinsel. Again, tied in on the far side of the hook. The reason for doing this is when you go to wrap the rib, it'll appear to start 
thread torque will take take it underneath and it will appear to start from underneath the fly. I just put a, uh, a wrap or two to secure that and now I'm tying in a, a single strand of Lagarten three strand red claret floss. You can use any claret floss. And again, I'm going to be working on a working on filling out this body here. Every once in a while, as as you wrap, the thread will um, twist up. It'll tighten up. And in order to get it flat again, you have to every so often spin it counterclockwise. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an approximation of where to tie in my hackle. The hackle will start just behind the second wrap of tinsel. This is just like on a full dress salmon fly. And I notice <clears throat> if you look at Ray Bergman's trout and you look at this fly, there are four bunches of hackle only which means that he followed this protocol. He started winding his palmered hackle starting just behind the second wrap of tinsel. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm wrapping the tinsel ahead of time, trying to find a good location that will, that will start just behind the second wrap of tinsel. And I think I've got it. So now I'm going to going to tie in my yellow hackle right at that spot. This is the right angle technique and the beauty of this is it brings it brings everything right down underneath the hook where you want it. And we'll do a little more bodybuilding here. These days, it's the most exercise I get. On this fly, it's really not necessary to do all this. It's just a habit I've gotten into over the years on just about any wet fly I tie. I want to make this the widest in the middle. This fly has palmered hackle, so this is, by and large, pointless so you just wrap back and forth until you're happy with what you have we're going to wrap the floss first if I can get it separated out here from the uh, from the tinsel I've got a very long piece of floss. I'm going to cut some of it off here. Out of, out of range of the camera, but that's what I'm doing. I'm cutting the floss. One long piece, but not that long. About, about you know, eight inches or so works well. Take your time wrapping. Just overlap just a little bit. Try to keep the floss flat as you wrap. You may have to twist it or untwist it in order to accomplish that. And this one, this went on fairly smoothly. I'm trapping it here three times. To trap material, you just take a, a wrap right in front of it and then behind it and then right in front of it and then behind it. Any material you're trying to bind down. If you want to keep the head area really clean, you can just trap things once. But in this instance, I'm not 
that worried about it. Trying to get the angle of this first wrap just right. So that I can wind up with five well-spaced wraps. Evenly spaced wraps. And I'll bind it down on the side. And it's going to work its way up to the top. That's all right. Not the end of the world. So now when I wrap my hackle, it'll start at the second turn of ribbing. This goes back to full dress salmon flies. That's how they were done. That's how a palmered hackle was done on a full dress salmon fly. This hackle is not a hen hackle. It's, um, it's a cock hackle. And palmered hackle typically was done with cock hackle. Then sometimes on a, on a big full dress fly, they would, they would add another hackle up front. And that could be a schlappen or a, a hen hackle. If you use hen hackle on this, and I've already tried it on a couple flies, you wind up with a ton of hackle. It's very difficult to deal with, especially when you go to mount the wing. I'm going to take this hackle. I'm going to wind it all the way, just about all the way to the eye here because I want to get enough length. The old spade hackle used to go from very fine, very short to very long strands in a, in a, over, in a short period of time. This newer hackle just doesn't do that. So you, you have to do the best you can with it. I love the new hackle for dry flies, but for this kind of thing, it's, it's nowhere near the hackle that we used to have. The other thing you want, you want this hackle to be sparse on this fly, and there's just about, with the modern hackle, there's just about no way to accomplish that. Starting at the second rib helps. If, if, if you do it the, the entire length of the body, it... Uh, you wind, again, you wind up with a lot of hackle. Now, as you can see here, I'm, I'm forcing the hackle down on the sides because I'm trying to get it out of the way of the wing I'm going to mount. I'm switching to black thread. Take four or five wraps just right over whatever you're doing, keeping everything under tension, of course. You always, always keep anything you're working with under tension. Fly tying. Right here, I want to pluck out that stray, so I'll, I'll keep the thread under tension as I do it. If I don't do that, I can run into some, some issues. Here I'm just binding down the front of the hackle a little bit to get it out of the way. I've already married up a pair of wings. If you want to see these exact wings married, go to my uh, married wing video linked below, Introduction to Married Wings. And I haven't, I haven't done a lot of straddling of the hook with this particular um, mounting. I pretty much just mount this straight up and down. The, the wood duck on this fly is really 
prone to collapsing. And these wings from above are dead, dead on. If nothing else, they're straight. Not the best set of wings I've ever mounted, but the mounting itself was fine. Take aggressive wraps up the head. I've got quite a bit of work to do covering stuff here, so I'll be doing a, a couple of whip finishes, I'm sure. Try to use flattened thread if you can. At some, t at times, the thread will will tend to split on you a little bit if if you're flattened, and you have to be careful not to use too much force with with it. Once it's flattened, it's very weak. But you'll get better coverage with flattened thread. You can see how it wants to separate, especially if you're going down a cliff like I've got here. Hold the thread under tension. Cut it. And we'll have a look at the final fly here after it's been glued up. Have a good look in 360. So there you have Bergman's version of the Cassard. I will do Mary Arvis Marbury's beautiful rendition of the fly, which is the original. Um, and it, it's actually much easier to, to tie than, than the Bergman. But give the Bergman a shot. I know I had fun. And look down below for links to Mary Orvis Marbury's fly and an introduction to married wings.